164, and I invite you to turn back to page 129. This is one of the Psalms we do an abbreviated Psuche de Zimra. This is one of the Psalms that we don't do out loud, but it is part of the Psuche de Zimra for Shabbat. And I had you turn there because in our Torah portion, there is a moment where all Moshe, I mentioned, Vayar Moshe, Kol HaMelachad, Moshe sees all of the work which has been done. And then we read, Vayivarech Otam Moshe, that Moshe blesses the work. And the rabbis ask, what bracha did Moshe bless the work with? And I do want to point out that there's a whole Torah portion at the end of the Torah called Vizota Bracha, where Moshe has many, many blessings, but the rabbis chose this psalm, which is Psalm 90. And can anybody tell by looking at the page why the rabbis chose this psalm to say that this is what Moshe blessed? This was the blessing that was said? Because it says at the top, a prayer of Moses, Tfilah Moshe, Ish Ha Elohim. But that's not the only reason that Kliyakar says that this psalm was chosen by Moshe. This psalm is chosen, look at how it begins. Not only was it a prayer of Moshe, but Ata Adonai Maon Ata Hayita Lanu Bedor Vador Adonai, you have been, it's translated here as a refuge, and there are reasons for that given in the notes but really is a ma'on is a dwelling place. You have been a dwelling place for us in every generation. And according to Klia Kar, Moshe is sort of making a philosophical argument here to say that even though we just finished building a mishkan, which is supposed to be a dwelling place for God's presence in the world, don't mis don't mistake that that's actually a dwelling place for God's presence in the world. Just as Solomon says, as the temple is built, uh, can the heavens contain you? The Kliyakar says that Moshe is saying, God, you are the dwelling place for the world. There is no dwelling place for you in the world. You are the dwelling place of the world. You have been, before the mountains were born, before you shaped earth and land from the very beginning of time, before the world ever was, you were there and the world dwells in you. Now that's a philosophical argument about whether God came first or the world came first, but it's important because then the song continues. You return humans to dust, saying, return children of Adam. And the Kliakar argues that the connection between that next line and what Moshe was just saying is, even though, so hey God, if really there's no place for you to, really you are the dwelling place of the world, so what is this whole thing? with building a tabernacle. And the answer that he gives is beautiful. He says, God needed to give up on God's honor and make a dwelling place in this world. Why? in order to forgive the sin of the golden calf. God truly wants to forgive. And in order to do that, God says, you know what? Even though I am not physical and I have been here long before the world ever was, I'm going to take a risk that people will think that there is a dwelling place for me in the world because, not because I'm literally dwell there, but because I want the Jewish people to have 
a project through which they can be forgiven. The rabbis teach us that the gold of the, of the, temp, of the tabernacle atones for the gold of the golden calf that by having a project that they engage in constructively instead of destructively, the people prove their worth. Now, I mention all of this. There was something else that happened this week. I was teaching a class and one of the students said something really important. We were reading a text and it was sort of hard to really um, connect to. And we talked about the need to engage in translation and figuring out what is our place in these texts. And sometimes it can be hard to connect to an idea of God and a tabernacle and, and theology and all of this stuff. And so I wanna give you a, um, what, one way to think about this. That text is saying that if you wanna find God, then look in the small places. God gives up on God's kavod, makes God self small. And I'll invite you just turn one page to 128 and look at the line for kuf, for uh, kuf, karov adonai lishpere leiv. God is close to those who are broken hearted. The et dake ruach yoshia, and those who are broken spirits, that's the one that God will save. So, if you have trouble relating to God, then look in broken places. And this is Haya Shabbat. And if you want to find God's presence, maybe we should think about the experience of the refugee about a million people who, as we sat at our Shabbos table last night, I said, they don't have a Shabbos table. They're in a subway. They are on the road, on a train, in a strange city. They don't know the language. They have little food. And in helping the stranger, in helping the refugee, we can not only bring God's presence into the world, but also perhaps sense God's presence as well. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat.